Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we are going to go over the installation of our Nano Spring Kit and Stainless Steel Striker Guide. Uh, we're going to go over some tools you're going to need. You're going to need your straight pick, you need a small flathead screwdriver, 1 16th punch, 2 millimeter Allen wrench, a 1 8 inch punch, and uh, nickel works the best, but change in general or a uh, coin of some sort. Uh, your bench block, some blue Loctite, and some decent gun oil. Of course, if the gun is dirty when you go to take it apart, you'll want your cleaning brush and some solvent. Um, so, Nano. Being a European style uh, slide lock, the way that this works is there's no external slide lock, so you know those of you who own it know bang, 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 locks open. So we've got a magazine in, so we can go ahead and check and make sure that she's empty. All right, so we're gonna physically and visually look. We're clear, we're gonna drop the mag. Forward, strike her down. Now, that's the way I personally do it. Uh, at this point, I sit here and I turn this and I take it down. Right now, there's some of you watching going, wait, the decocker. Here's the thing with what the manual calls a decocker. This is not a true decocker. Yes, it will de-stroke the striker, but that does not mean, I've had people email me before that they decock it and they'll carry. Uh, this is not a true decocker. You can't just pop this little button in here and you hear the blocker move out of the way of the striker enough to where the striker moves forward, uh, but not with enough force to actually set a round off and you've got a dead trigger. Do not carry your weapon decock that way because nothing. You're not gonna get any trigger pull. That is specifically for takedown of the pistol. If you're carrying that way, you still have to rack the side at least that much. You're adding a step in. Um, the only reason I pull the trigger when I do is just old, old habit from other striker fired pistols. Um, but you can push the button in here, destroke the striker, Turn that using your coin. Coin works best. You can use a flathead screwdriver, but the coin really just fits nicely. All right, and take the slide off. Now we're gonna start with the slide. So let's go ahead and set our frame off to the side. We're gonna pull out our guide rod, and this is our stainless steel 16 pound guide rod. Um, this one's been in here for about two years now, still holding up strong. We'll set that off to the side. We're gonna take our barrel out. Now comes the super fun part. This already has our striker guide in it, but I'm still gonna put together another striker guide to show you the proper way to put this whole thing together and reinstall it. Now, some of you, uh, it's gonna be easier than others because your striker guide that's in there now uh, may be a little more pliable. It hasn't hardened up over use and gotten brittle. Uh, most of you will be able to just push that down some and then push in here uh, where the extractor pin and spring are and get the back plate off. Now the easiest way to do this is you're gonna take your flathead screwdriver, get it up in there. This is where it becomes a two-handed operation here shortly. I like to push that down with my thumb and then, oh, lost it. Push that down, take our pick and push in on the extractor and at the same time, we're gonna push on the rear. It gets a little, a little frustrating. Now with your stock one, you should be able to just disconnect the blocker, push that forward, and it's gonna move out enough to where you can hold the striker down, push in, and remove the back plate that way. The problem with doing that on this one is that our stainless steel striker guide does not have give to it. So you're not gonna be able to do that. So get up under it. Push that down, and it may be easier to use your 1 it's it may get in there better. But you want to depress it and start sliding that back plate off. Now, as you can see, it's even hard for me, and I do this all the time. This back plate is really on there, all right, which is a good thing. You don't want to be shooting your weapon, and all of a sudden, you've got a face full of striker be a little awkward would not be the most fun in the world right. 
So we've gotten it off this far. So now you should be able to just depress and slide. All right. Now again, the only reason it's this, much, this hard right now is because we've already got our stainless steel striker guide in this one. Uh, you don't have any flex. This is stainless steel. This isn't plastic like the original. So this isn't going to flex, which is actually a good thing. It's not going to break. You're going to get much stronger strikes on the primer. All around, it's a much better setup. All right, so depress your blocker. Pull your striker out. Now, a lot of people have a tendency of doing this. They just turn it upside down. Notice all the extractor pins came out and the extractor spring. Now my extractor's loose, which is fine. That is not a problem. Go ahead and take those out get them out of the way. Here's where the problem begins. They turn it upside down and their striker return spring will flop out. And it's a very fine spring. It seems large, but if you've got it in the mix everything and it's off to one side, you may miss it. So if it comes out, we're gonna go ahead and take the blocker and blocker spring out and get them out of the way. If this spring comes out, put it right back in because what will happen is if you leave it out you'll forget about it and some of you may take out your striker and this this return spring doesn't pop out and you go oh no it's not in there just look down in there you'll see the spring uh, if it's not there then it's time to panic so we'll set that off to the side we're gonna go ahead and grab our blocker spring and if you've watched any of the installation videos you know what i like to do i suggest you do the same uh, take one spring out, take our blocker spring out, put our stock blocker spring in the bag and set it off to the side. All right. So that's the only spring that's going in the slide. So you can slide that right on in there. You can take your blocker and put it back in, which the blocker only goes one direction. So you don't have to worry about putting it in backwards or putting it in wrong. Everything lines up specifically one way so you're good and you may have to push your uh, striker return out of the way not a big deal come on you all right so our blockers back in we're gonna set our slide down leave the blocker and blocker spring in there now you have a stock plastic striker guide what you're going to do is you're going to compress the spring on your bench block you're going to take your pliers or a pair of dikes and you're going to snip the bullet end off. All right? Make sure you keep a hold of your striker spring when you do that. This thing's under a lot of tension. All right? So, we can get this apart so we can go over the orientation of the spring. Now again, if for whatever reason you end up needing to take this part later on, after you do install the stainless striker guide, keep a hand on that. Don't just let it loose. It'll fling one direction or the other. And when you open your striker guide package, yours will be a lot cleaner than this. This is one of our test guns. But this is how it's going to come out of the package. You're going to have a washer, retaining screw, and the striker guide. So now we've gotten rid of our old plastic striker guide. It'll, and actually it'll look a lot like this. That's what'll be in the bag. All right, so we've taken it. We've now got our striker spring. As you can notice on the striker spring, one end is more open, one end's more closed. The more closed end goes to the rear of the striker guide. The more open end goes towards the bullet shape front of the striker guide. All right, so we're gonna put the more open end on and take our bench block, compress the spring down enough to be able to get an, oh, I about skipped you there. Take the small washer. This washer is not designed to fit over the striker guide. It's not meant to in any way, shape, or form. But you'll notice one side has a little doming to it. One side's completely flat. You're going to take your retaining screw. And this domed area is going to go on to the retaining screw with the flat side facing your striker spring. Let's take your screw, we're going to get it started. 
Uh, you're also going to use blue lock tight on yours very very thin amount you're not going to need a whole lot all right now what i like to do is take and hand tighten just like that and you're going to tighten it till the screw stops you don't need to crank it down just hand tight till the screw stops and if you feel the need to snug it up any more than that you're going to take a pair of pliers hold on to the striker guide and just give it one little twist. That's it. You don't need to go any harder than that. You don't need to crank this thing down to the point where you're never going to get it off. All right. Mostly because if you compress the spring more than it should, then you're going to have light strike issues because the striker is not going to be able to move. The guide is not going to be able to move its full length so the striker is not going to be able to do it either so now we're going to take and the bolt shaped end goes in first now some of you will get to this point and go it doesn't fit you need to push it down in there just like your plastic one it's made to fit tightly so you get it in push it in until you get freedom of movement all right if you get to there and you're just doing this it's not going to work push it all the way in you'll hear it click in place and your striker guide has freedom of movement. All right, so let's go ahead and reinstall our striker. The blocker can be a little finicky sometimes. Remember, we already put our striker return spring back in, so let's put our striker in. You need to compress the blocker at the same time. If you have the blocker up, when you go to put this in, it's not gonna go. So make sure that you are compressing the blocker push your striker and it'll get into the right groove and it'll keep the striker in place. It's not going to let it come back out. So then we're going to take our extractor and put it on. It'll take your long extractor rod, put it in first. We'll tap it down into place. Making sure your extractor is seated correctly. It doesn't have to go all the way down in there because we're going to push it in anyway. Take your spring, put it on. That's where I like to take my 1 8 kind of seat it a little bit. Follow it up with the 1 16 Get it all the way down in there. And when that happens, when you push it all the way in, you'll feel and you'll see the first extractor rod uh, stop the extractor, so, or extractor, excuse me, as it gets into place. So now we're going to take our little short one and put it in. All right, so that's on there. We're going to compress the striker and the striker guide and get our back plate started. All right, then we're going to take our 1 16 and push down on the striker guide on the back, screw facing to the back, and get it out of the way. So we've got it on that far. So now we can take our pick and compress the extractor rods and spring and that way we can get the back plate on so now our back plates on we're done with the slide we can go ahead and put it back together set it off to the side now what i like to do to make sure that everything's in there correctly I like check my extractor make sure it's not going to just fall off and i'll go ahead and i'll cock my striker all right we see it's moving everything's moving fluidly and it stops right there. Now, if I push the blocker in, I'll be able to push the striker forward. The striker return spring on the opposite side will push it back. And that's it. That's a small little test we can do to make sure everything got in okay. And when you press on the blocker, you'll hear clicks. That's the blocker reseating, or correction resetting, and uh, also when it locks into place. So we're done with the slide. Now we're gonna start on the frame. First thing we're going to do is we're going to push out the takedown from left to right. So start on the flat side, take your 1 8 inch punch and just push. Now if it's stuck you can use a hammer but you're really not going to need it. It should just pop right out. All that's holding it in there's a little rubber seal uh, right here on the takedown and that's what's basically holding it in. All right so the next thing we're going to do this is where it gets fun. We're going to take our pick and get it under our sear spring here. Now I usually lock it right there so I can hold it with my thumb. And we'll take our 1 16th, 
and push. Ooh, careful, because even under tension, even while you're holding it, that thing will fling. Uh, fling your your pick away because that sear spring's got a lot of tension. So then you'll push from right to left the uh, sear pin, sear spring pin, correction. We'll set it off to the side. Now the last thing we gotta do, you'll notice it moves around a little bit now. Well that decocker is still in the way. But what I like to do is go ahead and make sure the front end's seated, push in on that, and pull up at the same time on the rear so that it's all out now we can very gently don't go ripping it out there's springs in here that you don't want to lose pull it off I'm gonna set the chassis down there are two very important springs that do not come out of this frame this is your trigger returns trigger bar return spring leave it in you don't want to take it out and this little guy right here is your slide lock spring all right so we definitely don't want to lose that because then the pistol's not, it'll still fire, but it's not going to function correctly. You're not going to get it to lock open on the last round and you're going to add a lot of headache. It sits in this very tiny little recess right here. So it's very easy to lose. It's very easy to misplace. So what I do is I take this and I just set it off to the side just like that. Uh, if you've got a vise, I suggest just very gently uh, putting it in the vise, clamping the vise down around it nice and easy enough to hold it and um, that way you don't crush the frame. So now we're going to take apart the chassis. Now the brilliant design, well, as you can see it's already falling apart. You're <laughs> All right, so this is your trigger pivot pin. We're going to take that out, set it off to the side. You're going to pull uh, your trigger spring cover off set it over here uh, this silver bar that fell out in this this is your slide lock and this is the slide lock bar set it off to the side take our trigger bar off and uh, we can go ahead and remove our trigger it just slides off your trigger spring will be over the front part of your stainless steel chassis here and uh, you just pull that off set it off to the side now to get the sear and uh, everything out I'm going to have to open up and pull apart that you're going to open it up enough just like that to where it pops out and a lot of people are going wow you really stretched that thing out this is the brilliant part of the design on Beretta's part this is stainless spring steel all right and they have had this formed exactly like this so it springs and I'm not saying you can sit here and pull as hard as you can and it's going to go back to shape but they purposely made these pistols modular. Uh, as you can, if you've owned one of these for a while, you know you can go online and get different grip frames and replacement parts fairly easily. The extractor is bent right into it. Everything's here. So they purposely designed it to be able to spread like that, but still close and go back into the pistol no problem. All right, so we've got everything out. Uh, here is our sear. Our sear return spring is going to go on here. Or correction our sear spring uh, so we'll do it first because it's the hardest part to get back in so we're going to start with the hardest part to put back together uh, go ahead and take your new sear out of the bag well everything's fighting me today send it off to the side take our old sear spring drop it in the bag we'll set it off to the side now if your sear pin falls out okay there's only one way it goes in don't put it in backwards you put it in like that and try and put the gun together, it's not going to work. You need to look to the outside. You'll see the rim on the pin. You'll see the rim on the outside. Drop it down in there. Your sear spring is going to go on like this. You're going to have, you've got the leg and then you've got the dog leg. All right. So the straight leg goes inside the sear, just like that. The dog leg facing the rear. Now, You'll know you put this in right because you've got three holes here. This hole is where the sear spring rod goes. This hole is where the square part of the sear and lifter assembly actually lock in. This hole is your pivot and your decocker. So 
I'm going to spread it back open and I start on the left side you gotta watch it because it wants to pop into that that uh, guide for the lifter and such slide it down on there this is how you know you're good all right this is in here where it should be you've got this springing out the sear spring uh, does double duty as the decocker spring and so you push it and you notice how it moves the sear and the lifter assembly out of the way so now you know how when you push that down it lets the striker go forward all right so next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our trigger spring on all right now we're going to take and the first thing you do is insert the spring and then the trigger then we're going to take our trigger pivot stick it through notice i'm keeping my left hand on this side when i install everything because otherwise it's probably just going to drop straight through like that so keep your hands over stuff your fingers such and such so on and so forth anyhow moving along we're going to take our uh, trigger spring cover put it on now if you notice there's a specific design to this you got the half moon here and the cutout in the center and the lip on the front so that you cannot put it in backwards it only goes one way all right we're going to put our trigger bar on the trigger and you can see how this operates now with the chassis out you pull your trigger bar or you pull your trigger the trigger bar moves stays on the outside of the decocker but pushes on the block here that's attached to the lifter and sear lifter lifts up blocker out of the way sear moves to the rear striker goes forward all right so now coming from right to left we'll put in this silver uh, bar or silver pin here this is our uh, slide lock pin if I seem to be stumbling through this, it's about 90 degrees back here in the shop. And uh, I've been back here a while, I'm a little hot, worn out. All right, so flip it back over, making sure to keep your fingers over the pins so they don't fall out. And this is your slide lock lever. Notice you got this little, little piece right here. That's gonna hit the slide lock spring when we put the chassis back in. And this bar here, is actually what goes into this bar here is what goes into the magazine this bar the uh, slide lock spring so the longer bar 90 degree angle goes inside that goes on there and now we're going to reinsert the chassis into the frame now this is where it can get a little bit tricky mainly because of the trigger bar return spring all right, so we're gonna start with the front, make sure everything's set and we get it in there. I'm gonna headbutt the camera. Now, we're gonna get to this point. And you're gonna push by hand the decocker into place because we don't want to hurry this part. Mostly because you cannot see the trigger bar return spring. So we're gonna snap it down in there. Now, before we get any further i'm going to go ahead and reinstall our sear spring bar and the reason we're doing this smaller end to the right bigger end to the left goes in from left to right it's because we're going to want to pull the trigger real fast and make sure that we're on the trigger bar return spring because if we're not we got to take it back out all right, so we are. Now, there's, like I said, unfortunately, there's no way to see uh, by design if you're on it. What'll happen is if you're not, when you go to pull this trigger, it's probably gonna just stay to the back. It's gonna stick. But without proper pressure from the sear spring pushing it up at the same time, excuse me, pardon me, you're not gonna know. So make sure that you go ahead and put the sear spring bar back in and then test. All right, so we're on the trigger bar return spring. Uh, you can tell, you can check without the mag, but the best way to check is take your mag, slide it up in there, and you'll see it push up on the slide lock bar. All right, 
So let's drop our mag back out. Last thing we gotta do from right to left is put in our takedown. All right. Now, because it's rubberized, that the gasket is that's holding this in, I like to always just give it an extra little push, make sure it's seated. Go ahead and put your slide back on. And now we're gonna function test. All right. So, I'm gonna try and pull the trigger without depressing the trigger safety. The trigger should not fall. Go ahead and depress the trigger safety, drop the striker, rack the slide, release. You'll hear a click. Trigger falls, you're good to go. Everything's great. Resets perfect. All right, and there you go, guys. That's it. That's the installation of the Nano Trigger Spring Kit and the Stainless Steel Striker Guide. Uh, if you've got any questions, be sure to email me at tech, T E C H, Tango Echo Charlie Hotel at GallowayPrecision.com. Uh, you can get all your nano parts directly from the website, www.gallowayprecision.com. Be sure to follow us on social media uh, here on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and that's going to do it for this one, guys. That's going to do it for the installation of this kit uh, and this video. Like I said, if you got any questions, email me. And as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless.